Hi, my name is Colin Graham from the uh, Ancient Evil City Crawler project, and I'm going to talk to you today about some of the sample pieces and uh, the best way to get the, the print results that you want using an FDM printer uh, like an Ender 3. So once you import your pieces into Cura, um, I use Cura for a slicer, but if you're using a different slicer, you probably know a lot about the print settings, so you probably don't need this video. But for most uh, users, Cura is kind of where we, 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 we go with our printer. Um, and first thing actually we'll notice here is that this piece is blue, which means it's sitting correctly on the plate. When Cura brings these in, these pieces, it just doesn't seem to quite find the base plate. So uh, they will print correctly without touching anything else. The, the printer will find the, 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 the bottom level, and I'll show you that in a second. But if I lower this by 0 0.01 millimeters, that's a very, very small amount. You can see that now that it, that it attacks the bottom of the build plate. And it would be the same for those two pieces. Um, but if just just to, for your own peace of mind, if you go to the preview mode in Kira and you let it uh, run the preview and you turn the layers all the way down to the base layer, you'll see that they are building clean base layers all the way across because your base light here is point your base layer here is in this case is point uh, well let's set this and actually let's set this to dynamic quality 0.16 and I'm just going to keep the changes that I have. I'm not going to change the extruder width or the infill density or anything like that. I'm going to stick with the settings I have and I'll show you what they are. Um, and uh, let's let it just do a quick slice here and we'll see that it's going to, it's going to correctly find the, the bottom layer. It's taking a little bit of time here uh, because 0.16 is actually a, a pretty dense layer height. Um, I like this 0.16 uh, for the dynamic. The, the default I try to use here is the dynamic quality. You can really fiddle around with your settings. Uh, I find that um, you know the, the Fat Dragon Games profile is really good as well too. I actually find this dynamic quality setting works really, really well, and it's simple, and it kind of everybody's version of Cura kind of has it. So we're going to start with that. It does take a long time to print these these pieces, um, but we'll turn on a couple of settings that might help with that. Um, so yeah, if we go down to the bottom layer. We can see that it's drawing a nice clean bottom layer, which is great. Um, so here you don't really need to have anything sort of in terms of adhesion helping. These pieces are pretty st standard and they'll stick to the plate. Um, sometimes these pieces like the door here, they're very thin in one axis. So the, the if your print head kind of bumps or catches it, it's not quite, your print is not quite configured correctly. Sometimes these pieces can get knocked. Um, so I sometimes, uh, if I ha I'm having problems with those pieces and I'm getting failures on them, I will, sometimes I just like to turn them uh, 40, you know, 45 degrees, not that way. Let's go to pre prepare mode. Uh, I like, sometimes I like to go like this and turn them a little bit because I think sometimes the axis works a little, little bit better, but sometimes I just want to put in the adhesion helpers. And the way I would do that is I would import one of my little adh adhesion helpers uh, my eight millimeter helpers like so as I did in the frames video and I will just put it here under this edge like that and this is just going to create a little bit of extra uh, plastic here to kind of help help it hold it and stick it to the base plate and remember you can scale this if you turn off uniform scaling you can scale this out a little bit and that that's going to kind of help hold it in place and this is really easy to just trim off with a with a an ex with a, a nice little you know you get your sharp knife clean it off afterwards so you can do that if you want um, I'm gonna I'm not gonna bother for the for, for, for mine though because I think my, my build plate sticking really well right now um, uh, not, so let's go down our settings here and see what we have we're using a 0.4 nozzle I think this is a good nozzle size I wouldn't change that uh, initial layer at 0.2 this these are pretty much all the default settings now you could you could take your wall thickness here and go down to 0.8 that's really going to speed things up a little bit as well too. Uh, that's going to be basically two passes on each wall. Um, and uh, that's going to hold the shape pretty well because these are pretty small, delicate pieces. So we could put that down to 0.8 if we want to. And we can see uh, that's going to lower the slicing time. The, one of the biggest things I find with slicing time is uh, the number of wall layers because they, they, are, they are drawn at a different precision level um, by, uh, the, by the printer. Um, While well, that's processing, we'll just go down here. That was nine minutes and something, or nine hours and something before. Um, it won't change the bottom thickness. Uh, you don't want to enable ironing. Infill density at 12 is, I think, is a good level. 15, 12 or 15 is a good level. Infill density doesn't really pull up the print time that much, I find. So you can see now we're already down here. We're uh, down there. So that side, we can say we're down to seven hours and 46 minutes, which is a better print time. And remember, we're trying to print these pieces to look really as good as we possibly can. 
Um, these are all the default settings. Dynamic quality is a fine setting, so it's it's already got a slower speed here, and that's all going to work fine. Uh, I haven't in, in retractions enabled. You don't really need uh, the Z hop um, when it's retracted. Um, it can you can introduce new. I find it can introduce new problems, and I tend to have always turn that off. Um, for build plate adhesion, what I like to do here is maybe use a brim for these. Um, and because a brim is really easy to get off as opposed to a raft. If you're really having problems with these things like coming off, like especially these thin ones like the doors, you may want to put rafts on those. Um, but uh, then you have a little bit of extra work to clean up the bottom of the, the piece as well too. So it might not be worth it. Um, it's kind of up to you. Uh, I like to use the brim. Uh, I only have a four millimeter brim. It doesn't need to be much bigger than that. Yeah, you can put it up to six mil uh, if you want. Um, and that's going to change these these two link fields are linked and the only other thing here is really important i think this is probably one of the best settings um in the in the newer versions of kira is uh, use adaptive layers and there's one more setting we can look at um which is uh make print overhang principle let's just see here quickly what the time is going to be with the brim seven hours and 51 minutes so eight hours to print these pieces this is not a great print time uh, honestly, this is a really high print time, but this is going to give you really nice results. Um, just out of curiosity, I have the Ender 3 um, Fat Dragon Games profile. Let's just run this one. Keep changes here. Let's just see what this one, what what what, what that one does, because this is this I think is a very good profile to use as well too. You can get it from Fat Dragon Games, and I and I do recommend it. Um, well, let's see what the print time comes out at. And actually, well, we're the other thing we can just point out here is uh, we didn't talk about any supports. Uh, typically, um, these pieces here should print. Uh, they've really been calculated. Everything's kind of been rounded out. See these little skulls have rounded spots under the bottom. Really trying to make sure that everything will print without failing. Um, these points here, I have sometimes have had issues up here. Um, because the print heads moving back and forth between these two so if you really are getting issues you can put a support you can put in a support just in here and uh, I will show you how to just add a support blocker in another video uh, because it's a it's a it's a different technique it's a really it's actually a really useful technique so that with the fat dragon games profile is gonna take 10 hours and, th and 30 minutes so uh, I really really prefer the dynamic quality setting so I'm just gonna keep my changes let's get rid of a couple of things here the processing for the video here um, so and then we'll just go back and I'll lower this by 0 0.01 just for my own peace of mind minus 0 0.01 and then it's on the plate nicely um, so I'll show you the uh, print make mate make print uh, hang um, maybe make a over hang principle this is a tough one to get out. So I'm gonna turn that on. It's gonna to need to slice it. Now these are these are taking a while to slice because we've we've intentionally left these to be very high res. Uh, if that's uh, something that people want, if they want lower res, we can decimate these further and then remove some of the detail. But the detail, because a lot of the detail that's in these sculpts won't show up that well on an FDM printer or if at all, but they will show up on a resin printer. Um, but you know, so we we might make more um, optimized versions if that's what people are requesting. So make overhang printable. I think I need to go into preview mode. Yeah. So if I toggle between these, we can kind of see that it's 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 added a little bit of kind of meat to here. It's kind of smoothed this out and added meat here to this. And this might be a good option to use. Um, it's actually added uh, geometry, added print paths here to add geometry there. Uh, to make that a little bit uh, better and that doesn't affect anything on the inside of this it doesn't affect anything on the inside so let's see where do we go here what's it doing slicing it again oh it's slicing it because i've moved it yeah you can see what size the raft is there so that might be an, a, a good option is to if you find that you're having some issues with that is to use that make overhang printable um on actually you know what instead of making it in the video we'll just show you right in this video here how to add support blockers so um, what we do is we click on our mesh and we click on uh, this little guy here and that's going to drop a piece of the mesh in here and I'm going to lift this guy up and actually you could use this to make adhesion helpers as well too 
um, a, because you can set the type that this is. So it prints in a normal mode. If I change it to that, it's going to print. This is going to literally print a solid cube. If I do that, it's going to print as a support. Um, if I'm going to do this, I can use the modify settings and I can change things like the wall thickness in only, only in the parts that are inside this volume, which is actually really cool. And uh, what was the last setting here? Uh, don't support overlaps, which I don't know what that is and I've never used it. We want the print as support. And uh, this is going to use the settings, the, 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 the settings you set up for support inside that. I'm going to hit the T key to move that into position. And you kind of need to go to the front, kind of position in the center where you want, and scale it. And I'm going to do it across like, let's see, I'll scale it like that. And hit the T key. I'm just switching between the T key and the S key for scaling. Um, I'm just going to try to kind of figure out how high I kind of want it to go. And okay, so now I'm going to put it back to the center. I'm going to scale, keep scaling up. This is a little bit fiddly. This is not my favorite way to manipulate stuff in Kira. So lift this up and scale it again. So just switching between uh, translate and scale. And now that piece is going to print a support inside there like that. And uh, your support should be pretty easy to pop off. And it really, it, it might you might have a little bit of an issue here. But remember, these are stone tiles, so it doesn't really matter if they're. Um, uh, it doesn't really matter if the, the the detail. You can kind of clean that up with a knife a little bit as well too. Um, they have a rough look to them, so they're, they're, they're forgiving from a modeling point of view. And I just need to duplicate that for the other side. And then you just go back here, click on the mesh, click on this, drag, and, or actually you just click onto the mesh, it's going to add the piece, translate to move it up, about to the center, scale to scale it in. And actually sometimes it's easier to set it up in this sort of see-through mode. Um, and then scale. And then just translate it back a little bit and scale it a little bit more. And I want to, I just, I don't really want it to stick out the front. I want it to be a little bit thinner and fit on the inside. Okay. So that way you could create a support blocker um, like this. Oh, don't forget to click on it and set the type that you want it to be. You don't want it to be normal. You want it to print as a support. And if I preview that, let's just let that preview and it'll show us what the supports look like. And uh, here we go, processing. And yeah, so there you go. So those are what your supports are. You can see the little air gap in the supports. So those those things should come off pretty easy, but it will give you a little bit of extra extra juice in there. Uh, if you just one thing is if you take these pieces and you scale them like this, these little pieces here will actually you'll see here the, the, the it'll try to print those as support pieces on top. Um, it doesn't really detect the inside of it, um, but that's that's kind of okay. Uh, what you would do in this case is you would build a piece in the middle and then you would put two thinner pieces on the side that were a little bit shorter and you would kind of deal with the arch that way. Um, yeah, you see how it, it's, it's, oh, it's kind of grayed them out, has it? Oh, it's smart enough to figure it out. Okay, you could do it this way. So you could have a wider support. Never mind. I thought it worked the other way, but I guess it doesn't. It does not draw that support. It only draws that support underneath. So I would do the same thing on this side here. Maybe make this a little bit wider. Just till those kind of pop out in the top there. That would be kind of optimal. That would print really, really well. That'd be really nice and stable. And uh, you get a good result out of that. And, um, you know, I have a little FDM printed piece here. It's the same as that. And it's been printed. And it was printed with a support. And there's really nothing on the bottom that you can see because it has this sort of dry brush stone texture and then when you're done with it too the door just goes on the top and there you go all right so uh yeah my just to wrap that up dynamic i just just basically recommend the dynamic quality settings uh and the use adaptive layers and if you want to uh, think about use uh over, uh principal overhangs and pretty much leave everything else at stock from that oh and uh reduce your baby reduce your wall layers from point um uh, 0.12 which is three layers to 0.8 which is 0.2 layers you'll shave a few hours off your print time all right take it easy